Okay, today I'm going to be changing out my Excelsior's here on my 65 bug. Uh, might as well glen it, I don't know if you pass that. Hopefully you can see down on the ground why I'm doing this, because even though this vehicle's not being driven, it's still leaking. So, obviously there's a problem. Anyways, there's four bolts with a 14 millimeter head. See, I already replaced the uh, emergency brake cable, and that's the reason we're doing this. I'm replacing the brakes on it, and what's the purpose of changing, or what you would it do to change the brakes if you just leak a bunch of gear oil into the brakes? So, put that in there so it doesn't get completely dirt filled. No electric impacts here because I just haven't bought one yet. It is stuck on there, so one second. It's just the gasket holding it. There you go. Surprised it didn't leak anymore since there's quite a bit of fluid in there. Anywho, so things you gotta look out for is okay you can't tell there's there's an o-ring there but you can't tell anymore it's so smashed the bearing seems to be in good shape i'll have to scrape that gasket off because it is really stuck on there okay one thing to make sure you don't lose or misplace or put in the wrong order is i don't want to come out of course wow that is crazy there's, there's a spacer in here that is stuck okay I've taken it apart and did kind of the exploded view of things here here's that and it's got a tapered so it goes that way in so you know when it's flat on this side there's the spacer here's what doesn't even look like an o-ring anymore it's supposed to be round and nice and uh, pliable it's not here's the uh, inner shim and here you can barely tell is the o-ring that goes around the outside which are all in this part so you have your gasket there's your big go ring, there's your seal. This is other outer spacer, which man, this is dirty enough to clean it up. And then the inner seal right there that you have to press out to get both the spacer and of course the seal itself out. Now, this gasket appears to be really thick, which is a little dis disconcerting here. But anyways, because the problem is, and people say, you know, There'll be a debate over this on how you shim these. They were shimmed with these gaskets to get the proper uh, thrust, bearing thrust, or whatever. But the big issue that's been going on since day one or early 80s and blah, blah, blah is they think this is the only place where you shim it. And that's not true. There's shimming that needs to be done on the axle itself, which is a total old deer, whatever word I can't say, that I haven't done since the 80s. And I 
to do this properly, yes, but you practically need to take it to a Volkswagen training shop to do that anymore because I don't even know where you get those seals and be able to measure that. I don't even remember how to measure the tolerances of that. And that's a little more critical if you're building a performance bug because what will happen is this, you know, this is, there's a bearing here. This, this is tight. It's not going to move. But if you have any slop back where the axle spade shaped axle is and you have a performance engine and you dump the clutch on it and that there's too much too much you know, too much you know wear and tear and it's loose and it's not shimmed properly it will shatter that axle I've seen it happen so but if you got a street driven bug with a stock engine and you're not a type of person that hammers the clutch and jams through gears just changing this and hopefully guesstimating the tolerances here. That's why I say this really thick gasket kind of has me worried. The old day, the the in fact, this one only has one, which is a little weird, but I don't know. It's kind of scary. Is the old thing with the really thin yellow paper thin gaskets was I think the factory setting was you put two in. This one only has one, but it's hard to tell because it is so deteriorated. Obviously, this is where my problem is because everything in this is in such poor shape. So, anyways, that's basically it. Um, just trying to go over the worries and that, and so you can see the order in which it goes. I'm just going to take all this and throw it in the carb clean to make it a better, less messy mess. Uh, another thing I want to show you, if I can turn the camera, let me take it off the stand. Is you see how the axle boot is installed? Somebody installed it with the, the split. It's a split type. It's, I mean, there's real pain to do the solid ones because you have to take, take the axle pin out here and slide this tube out. It's a real pain. But anyways, this is installed improperly. There's no way that this needs to go up and down. It's going to be flex, flex probably with that. Now, all you have to do is put it to the side here or the front, depending on what you seem is better. I mean... I got the starter out of the car. There's no easy way to do these with the engine and training and stuff, you know, all in the car. It's going to be a bear. So, I mean, it's your preference. You can put this on this side, you can put it on that side if you use the split boots. But that's the last tip I want to give you is showing you that that is the uh, improperly installed. And this brake line is fine, but let me show you what somebody did on the other side. You know, it seems like a great place, like good old American cars. Let's, when we're towing this thing, or let's tie it down by the axle, but of course over here somebody has crushed the brake line, and not a huge deal to replace. I might even have some of this material or this tubing to uh, do it on my own but be careful where you tie these things down I always go way up here it's pain when you're in the trailer I always go way up to the uh, torsion housing itself and put my straps up there and as you can see they also installed this boot on the wrong side and it's broke and yeah it's old and rotten but also that's the other thing that happened if it can't flex right it's gonna tear eventually tear itself and with the quality of Volkswagen parts being able to get nowadays being subpar, that is another reason you want to install it the best you can. So that's about it for now. I think I've showed you enough. If you have mechanical abilities, this one's not leaking as bad, but it is leaking. You should be able to just figure it out. I mean, it's just taking four bolts out, putting stuff back in the right proper order. Noticing if you have any excessive slack, then you might want to address your transmission issues. A reputable transmission shop will properly shim the axles. In fact, if you're buying a swing axle transmission shop from a reputable shop and you brought it in with the axle tubes, they would say, hold on, wait a minute. We can't do this without your axles and your axle tubes. And they will set the initial part and sometimes will even set this outer part with the right shims. So that's my tips of the day on your Volkswagen changing your axle seals and dealing with axle boots. See ya.